I often think it's interesting to see the people who pass through here and the people who stay. Not everyone wants to come to a cold country where there's not really guaranteed the ways, and when the ways come, they can be seriously hectic and really, really dangerous. There's very few people that will endure that kind of hardship to get the little reward at the end. No, I haven't been here that long, and, well, I'm just not from here, I guess. Empty paradise, cold water empty paradise, Ireland. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> when the waves are on, yeah, it's great. Like, but I mean, there's periods you could go a month and you wouldn't get surfing with the weather, so rough and it's horrible. But I don't know what a surfer would be doing hanging around here in the winter time. He'd want his head examined. I'm not good in the cold. You look at, like, the Irish guys are, like, standing barefoot in paddles before they surf, putting on wet wetsuits because they surfed already. <laughs> I'm not like that. Oh, it's bitterly cold. Ireland, cold. <laughs> <laughs> Uncrowded perfection. <laughs> Shall we go for a Guinness later, Kean? Great! <laughs> <laughs> Freezing. <laughs> See you there. Hands are actually sore. It feels pretty weird to say like hardships and surfing in the same sentence, but it's sort of like a reason, a reason to be here and a reason to leave. <laughs> it's kind of an attraction and a detraction at the same time. It's really annoying to see Ireland constantly promoted as this cold water paradise, empty waves. That's the tag that's been put in Ireland. But unfortunately, the waves aren't empty anymore. But I mean, I don't think it's anywhere near the level of the crowds in other places. If you're there freezing your ass off in a cold wetsuit, everyone has that kind of respect for each other that you've, you've made it there and you're, you're toughing it out. People who like to whinge and complain just shouldn't come here because, you know, everyone feels the cold, everyone can complain, but, you know, you don't want to hang out with someone who's constantly complaining about cold weather, wet wetsuits. I had a point here about this, what the fuck was it? Positive thinking and positive drinking. <laughs> I decided that I was going to stay on my third morning of being here. My brother and I hitchhiked a lift down the coast with an old guy. This old guy just pulled in in his little car and we hopped in and he was just telling us all about the folklore and the mountains and the names of the mountains and the little harbors and everything we were, that were going past the window. He had like a story for everything. We were in the car for an hour, and by the time I got out the car, I just had this overwhelming 
knowledge that I, that this would be my spot. Like, I didn't have a worry in the world. I just knew I was staying here. I'd never surfed anything over six foot before I came to Ireland. It wasn't really something I was looking to do, to go ride big waves. It was m more, I think, I I fell into the, this little, like, friendship with a couple of people, and that was what they were into. And I just kind of got pulled along with them all and um, found myself suddenly going out to Mullagmore for the first time and being completely out of my depth and freaking out, looking at waves. I'd never seen anything like it. It's a spectacle, you know, to sit there and watch that wave come around the headland and detonate the way it does down the reef. It's pretty amazing. It's akin to standing and watching a giant waterfall or climbing up a massive mountain. It's something in nature that stops you in your tracks and makes you feel small, and I love that. That's what I'm about in every way, whether it's going hiking to get that little nature kick or walking my dog in the forest, simple things. There's been a few people who've came here over the years that have made a big impact on the Irish surfing scene. The main influence would have been Coddy, I'd say. Coddy and Gabe would have been a massive benefit to the Irish scene because they pioneered big waves here along with the Irish crew, and without them, we wouldn't have seen the kind of stuff we're seeing now. Throughout the years, there's been a few more, like Noel Lane. He's probably the best guy Ireland's had live here, I would say. He's just completely torn everything to pieces from small waves to big waves. He's just gotten more comfortable over the years and really, really impressed everyone. So it's quite inspiring to see someone like him with such a humble approach. He says he's in love with his Irish girlfriend, but I think it's the Irish waves. <laughs> oh, it's got to be Tara. <laughs> I don't really feel like um, I kind of have, you know, I'm an authority to give an opinion on, on like, here because, you know, I've not, I haven't been here that long and, well, I'm just not from here, I guess. But, yeah, anyway. For me, it's not so much that there's, like, one big attraction here. It's more that it's so different to where I grew up that I've found it's been, like, almost like a learning experience again. I kind of found that process of like learning how to surf in a wetsuit and how to like read the coastline differently and massive tides and even just things like the wind conditions and stuff like that. That was really interesting for me. And here as well was kind of my first real introduction to surfing slabs, I guess. And that has become like a, a challenge and, a, and something that's sort of excited me for the last couple of years.
on the fringes of Europe, so it's quite rogue and a humbling experience a lot of the time, but mostly it's really, really satisfying when you finally get that little window of perfection. It's kind of a privilege, you know, just to see what we see on those days and to be able to mold your life around that, we're very lucky. That's the feeling we're all chasing the surfers, and uh, once you get it, you're happy. You know, you just gotta wait then, be patient for the next time it comes around.